Hey, how you doing? Let's do it to it. Let's get on the puzzle rush. Puzzle rush. Puzzle rush. Get a drink here, <clears throat> then we'll get started again. Okay. Cause there's a pen there. Uh, I had their mate, so I had it somewhat.
let's see. Takes. Hmm. Ah. Did I not say there? Huh. <coughs> Need a drink and then we'll see.
first shot. Then we gotta get studying.
Oh, was it the other way? Ah, oh, drat. Was it this way? Or did I just take? Hmm. I'll have to find out. And we'll get started after this. Not that. It comes up here. Cha. Oh, it's protected by the bishop, and that would be mate. Oh, drat! I knew I, I, I went against. Ah, drat, drat. Because you have to cover here. Ah. Uh. Okay, let's get on to our studies now. I'm gonna do this here. We'll we'll do a um, it'll do a end game. Yep, let's do it to it. Let's get this Magnus in game set up. Clear the board. This to be black to move and put into a study. Let's do this one here. Get rid of that. Put that for zero. Oops. I take that off. Zero.
Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Let me get a drink. Alrighty. So it's black to move. Man, this is white. I'm just gonna move, but it's black to move. So rook a6 to try to eyeball the pawn. He uh, aims to simplify to a four rook endgame. Uh, Carlson says that um, a5 potentially would have been a more interesting move for his opponent. And uh, <clears throat> it is just it's a decisive idea after f4. Then uh, rook a c8. F5. Bishop uh, e5. <clears throat> rook a7. Rotate c2. Rotate c2. Rotate c2. Rotate c5. And then uh, bishop d4. Black would hold easily at this point. Uh, um, c7. Bishop g7. Uh, bishop takes bishop. King takes. And then uh, Magnus plays a double exclam move, c3, double exclam. Because what he's doing is he's saying to Black, I'm not going to allow you to take my A pawn, and potentially I can get my rook to c2, protecting all this, and then uh, I can move my c rook and keep the attack going. A deep idea, the winner later uh, ex later explains it might look weird to, to, uh, weird to move a pawn one square instead of two, but I thought I was being quite clever as I probably play, I probably should have played uh, f3 to f4 at some point anyways. Then it might be a good idea that the c-pawn is captured in some lines. But he said that this was an interesting, he really liked this idea. So rook to b8 and uh, f4 gets played. My aims to attack the uh, with uh, <clears throat> um, rook e3 and g3 for a uh, decisive win. So bb7 or bb6. Not A, B, but uh, B, B, 6. Black could go after the A pawn with uh, Rook A1 check. Or B1, sorry. Rook B1 check. King G2, Rook A1. Um, Rook B2. <coughs> Rook B6. Rook takes, pawn takes, and then rook uh, d7. White is slightly better. So I'll put slightly better here. d7. Manus keeps the rook on the board, preventing his, pre preserving his attacking chances. Rook c6, rook e3, rook a2, e5. Carlson gets rid of his doubled pawns on the other hand, reducing the number of pawns helps the defender takes, 
takes and then rook c5 which this is a uh, dubious uh, move here man man is suggests that actually the best move here is king g6 uh, exclaim for black because what what black wants to do is put some threats to the pawn by moving it into f5 then rook f3 to cut the king off rook c5 rotate f, f uh, this takes here rotate c5 rotate c7 rotates rotates and this could uh, would be a draw interestingly he does not mention that he checked it with a chess base on the other hand I might certainly have found all available modern he would have used basically the author says he would have checked this with a computer to see if it's truly drawn but I'm sure with proper play and the strength of the opponents like Madness is 2800 and his opponent is 20 uh, 27 uh, 40 that that this probably is a draw and they they'd be able to end up a draw. Rook G three. <clears throat> Oops, let me see where am I? Oops, right here. Rook G three check. Isn't it exclaim? Sending the king to the eighth rank is not a good idea. King f8. King h6 is a double question mark blunder. This is a losing move. d8. Now you're threatening mate. King h. Root d4. Uh, which leads to checkmate. Uh, rook f3. Rook c5. F takes. Uh, F takes. Uh, F5. A uh, rook on f takes f7. King e8. Rook uh, e f2. Uh, rook f e2, e7, not e2, f e7. King f8. Rook h7. King uh, g8. Rook d. g7. King f8. Rook b7 uh, here. King g8. Which is a uh, actual dubious move. Just gotta check to see how we're doing on, on time. Perfect. This move uh, worsens Black's difficulty after um, Rook g5. King f1, and then King g8, uh, rook takes here, rook takes, and then rook takes. Rook H uh, E7 <clears throat> can be met by Rook to F5. Exclaim here. Rook takes. Oops, not not this here. 
to say. What to say, and this would uh, hold for black according to the Lamba Sova table. All moves are sufficient for black to hold. H uh, G seven exclaim King eight King H eight Black can actually hold another way too if uh, King uh, here. G uh, C7, or G C7. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry about that. Rook A1 check. King H2. Rook H5 check. King G four three Rook G one check King F three Rook F five check uh, King E two Rook G eight Rook takes A seven Rook G two Rook A check. Rook to uh, F D eight. Rook takes. King takes. And this uh, should be a draw. This should be able to be hold, held. <coughs> Rook G E seven. Rook G five check. King F one. Rook C two Rook B uh, C seven and then A five which is a mistake here. <coughs> this seems to me to be a decisive mistake. Modern words from an all time great player. Um Rook G6 would have been a holdable move. Exclaim. And then uh, Rook to E8. Rook um, G. Rook takes E6. Rook F8. Oops. Rook F8. Rook E2. Rook C1, King G2, Rook G8, King F3, Rook G7. Man, this thinks this is this is more drawish than winning for White. So uh, C5, Rook C, not C6. Rook C5. Kind of a Lucinda setup. King E3. But it's not really a Lucinda, but it's kind of he's trying to use it, uh, the Rook as a bridge. F7. <clears throat> King E3. Rook E7. The Rook stands less. Well, on on C uh, on C five. E five. 
Rookie eight. Rook uh, G8, Rook C5, Rook G7. <coughs> I think black can survive, that's what the author says. So, Rook takes E6, A4, Rook A6. G4, Rook G7 could be played. Um, H6 check exclam. <coughs> Rook G8, Rook C8 check. King F7, Rook A6, now Rook A2, C4, A3, C5, Rook A1 check, King E2, A2. King F3, and Madness thinks that White should win here. C4, exclaim here. Nice move here. The pawn is poison because um, I'll explain to you why. Rook G7. You're probably wondering why not just take, right? Because if check here, you have to block. After takes, rook takes, and then you take there and you win. So this takes is. Uh, uh, double question mark blunder and of course you see if you take here this leads to uh, instant checkmate so this is a double question mark blunder as well it wasn't in there but I wanted to show you why the move was a interesting one takes, king takes, and then rook takes a, a4, king f6, king g2, e5, uh, a5 check, to exclaim move. He can improve an improvement Magnus said could have been uh, King F3 now King uh, plays here King F4 Like if, um, because this right here is saying this could potentially end in a draw. This move here would end in a draw. That's why uh, he was saying that either this move here or this move there, those two moves would uh, be efficient. This right here also would be a draw, but he didn't play that. He played king e6. <clears throat> you 
f king f four. Uh, c5 and wins if um, king d4, king d5, king takes c4, rook d8, rook a2, king g3, a7, F4, rook g7, king f3, rook f7, king g4, rook g7, king f, oops, h7, no, it's a massive, king f5, and wins, that's what Carlson says. Rook c5 here, d6, D5 check, king e6, rook d4, king e5, a rook h4. The rook is more active here. <clears throat> rook c3, c5, and the pawn is poisoned, so he can't take. If he, of course, you see if he, if he takes here. Let's see, what, what did he actually play? King f5. If he plays rook takes, uh, rook takes check, king comes up, rook takes, king takes. Whoever is to move. Now you get the one move you needed for opposition, and then it comes in, you win. If it comes here, and then the pawn comes up the board, up it goes. <coughs> so that that's why uh, then rook h8 exclam was actually played. This is a beautiful move, because you're enticing, you're tickling your opponent to uh, want to take it. If he does, no, in this case, it loses a whole rook. So king f4, king c8, king e5, c6, king d6, king uh, f3, I mean pawn f3. Carlson uh, aimed to improve the king by the way, f4 would lose. So if you've tried, this is a mistake for white. If you're thinking that, you don't want to um, give your opponent any counterplay. Like rookie three would spoil the win here. So he uh, just plays here so his king can get involved. C5. And you're probably wondering, why not just grab the pawn, right? I know what you're thinking. Just grab the pawn, grab it, right? King takes, up, comes over, up, it comes over, up. And then you're thinking, huh, can't you just come here? Nope. Because remember, then you have to give way. to give way and then the pawn goes up the board. King g3, g5 check, king f4, king g1, oops I'm sorry I did uh, f4, king h4 this is it, king here, and then f4, king e7, 
C7 is an exclaim uh, move here. It looks like it doesn't work because don't you lose a um, a pawn a piece here? Don't you lose a piece? You'd think, right? We already know Mendes likes to push the pawns to the seventh rank. So rook uh, c1 would be played. If uh, now, now this is what we're looking at right here. D8, king takes, rook d2, and this actually uh, wins. Because what, what you're trying to do at this point is if, uh, if he tries rook f uh, here, you can actually play g5. If he checks, you play there. If he comes here, f. If he waits, he comes here. You kind of can actually get a Lucinda position going here. And then if, if you just wait. And now uh, you have, uh, if, if he just waits, you have the uh, ability of going uh, d4. And if he waits, you can actually check here. And then you get a loose Cinda position. And it's, it's a win, this is winning because the king isn't close enough to the pawn. C7 is clam, rook c1, then king g5. And, and uh, this actually wins. Let's see, how are we doing? Okay, and we're, uh, now we're going to uh, do some uh, puzzles. Okay. We'll do a couple puzzles. Let's get them set up. do six and then we'll we'll see how we're doing on time after the six Queen takes, king takes, and then the uh, bishop takes his mate.
this is a walk in the park here. If you take, you take there, it's pinned, and then that's me. There's one bishop right there. Taking queen f4, you're right. King takes. Oops, not not ninety three. Let me see. Knight g6. Sorry, because uh, if we played here, this allows. Um, there e5. So we can't allow that. So we gotta take that e5 spot away. Now the only way to do it is by the knight. move is queen takes, I takes, and f6, open smother mate. Knight uh, d5, if king uh, b8, then that uh, d6 is mate. If pawn takes, then uh, queen d6 is mate. One more.
Okay. Night takes. That's mate. Let me see what time it is. Oh, it's thick. I'll give it a shot.
Ah, it's right. Let me uh, take a look here. I should have played here. There's takes. You could take there. And that wins. Let me see. Okay. I gotta see if this move was right. And then we'll call it a day. Oh! Didn't I see that? Too close to the outcome. So this mate here. Interesting. So I had mate. Okay. So mate, there's that was uh, so that was correct. Hmm. Mate, there. Uh, okay. So this first is better than there. Ah, so I missed winning a bishop. Okay. Boy, I learned a whole bunch from that. A couple of tactics that were missed. That's okay. Hey, you know what? That was actually really informative. I need to erase this and mark where we're going to pick up tomorrow on our puzzles. I didn't get mated, so that was good. I <laughs> so we'll call it on this. All right. I want to thank you for all logging on. This is great. Congrats. You know what? We're doing good. We got to keep. Remember to push you forward. Look for tactics. That shows you right there. I need to be on the lookout for tactical move sequences. So I need to, uh, there's a really good book if you're wanting to learn tactics, it's called Tactics from Scratch, and it's a really good one that will help you with the basic fundamentals of tactics, and it'll, it's really good. I, I enjoy doing it. But what we have to remember always is that, you know what, we, uh, we honor the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. That's the the Lord Jesus always. And we have to remember to take uh, and take what we know and apply it. Be willing to do something with it. And you know what? It's good to uh, look at those um, kind of just every once in a while. Maybe do one five minute game or so, just for one reason to see how you would do under pressure. Like you should do. My teacher told me at least fifteen or above. Because uh, five minutes don't allow you to think as much as uh, 15 minutes would. You can't strategize as best as you can. You make mistakes. But what you can do is after, let's say you lose like I lost that game on time. And I kind of didn't know how to handle it at that moment. I, you you got to get past the panic. And so sometimes you have to maybe do one five-minute game a day. 
one. And just, uh, but the rest of them, if you're going to do maybe one or two, uh, the rest are three of them. You should do two that are 15, one that's five. Because what you have to teach yourself is if you get into a 60 minute game, uh, G, G60 with like, a, we'll say a five second delay, no increments added on, you'll have to be able to, when you get to an end game, if you've spent too much time calculating, you have to be able to think fast, have good instincts, but don't spend all your time, trust me, you don't want to spend all your time on like five or ten minute games. You want to try to go 15 or above. And we have to remember that what Tango says, and I mean what Th Tom Thumb Thumb told Tango is, treasure your victories, learn from your losses, and remember that mistakes do not define you. It's how you handle a mistake that defines you as a person and a chess player. But th that's why I like yes, Sarah Wan's um, uh, quote every long journey begins with one small step so that's that's very vital and uh, I'll leave you with that and as Wesley uh, no, uh, I gotta remember our chest crutcher motto is hanging up our coats hanging up our hats sitting down and studying when most won't chest crutchers do and that makes all the difference it does in any area of your life trust me that model will help you in any area of your life. And uh, then I'll leave you with that. It's Wesley So says through Lord Jesus, as I say, God bless, and I'll see you next time on Chess Cruncher TV. Have a blessed morning, afternoon, and evening, and Lord will, and I'll be back on tomorrow. And we'll keep pushing forward. You know what? Remember what Hannibal Smith said, forcing moves. Like, I missed a forcing move combination. I, I saw a fork. I didn't see the best move. So you have to remember always to find the best move. And uh, so, you know what? Apply that to your game and you'll improve dramatically. But, you know, in the end, it all is about the talent that the Lord Jesus has given you. And whom will you serve this day? What will you do with your time? Will you spend it in an area that will help you improve in the, in the uh, spots that you want to go down? May, it may be uh, education at the moment that you're um, you're wanting to pursue. If you do other stuff rather than spend time on education, your your education is gonna um, not be as good. You're not gonna get as good of grades that you need to to get through that class. But you know what I mean. So you have to remember what am I gonna spend my time? What am I gonna be doing? Is it gonna benefit me in the long run? And you always gotta have a that's why there's, I, I consider it, there's strategy and tactics. Your strategy is your long-term goal uh, that would set up for a tactic. So you have to, you have to think, if I do this over here, as a, a, and like we'll think of it as a strategy, what's the end goal of my tactic? Am I going to be able to get a good grade? Am I going to be able to do this? Is it going to help in that area? Just some advice I wanted to share with you. But in the end, you know what? It's all about the Lord Jesus and have you received him as Lord and Savior and that's that's the main important thing. But chess is fun too. So yeah, you got to always have fun with chess like you know what um it's a good game for your mind and it'll help you uh always in all areas it'll it'll help improve everything in your um your mind, body and all that. You know, so hurrah, two thumbs up. Be blessed. Have a great rest of the day, our evening, wherever you are, our morning. And you know what? Keep studying chess, honoring the Lord Jesus, and uh, having fun. And I will see you tomorrow. So hoorah. Again, double thumbs up. And be blessed. And I will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.